The ECB paves the way for another round of stimulus in September, but markets wanted more. Central banks remained the key focus this last week with the ECB paving the way for a fresh package of monetary stimulus that will likely be delivered in September just before the current ECB president departs in October. Now Draghi noted that a considerable mass of inflation expectations are moving towards lower inflation. We don't like it and we're determined to act. The ECB governor noted he had tasked committees with examining options including ways to reinforce forward guidance on policy rates, the design of a tiered system for reserve remuneration, and options for the size and composition of potential new asset purchases. So all tools the ECB can wield are up for review and it's likely that we'll see a raft of policy announcements at the September meeting. However, markets clearly wanted more. Following the raft of bad German data earlier in the week, some had expected a rate cut at this meeting. German manufacturing surveys suggested that industry conditions are in free fall. The IFO Institute Manufacturing Business Climate Index slumped to the lowest reading in more than nine years. And the German PMI hit the lowest level in six and a half years, leading Draghi to note in certain sectors, in certain countries, a quickly deteriorating economic outlook. With European stocks lower on the day, it's fair to argue that global markets need to see action to sustain the massive gains in equity markets so far this year. The S&P 500 is up almost 20% year to date, having hit fresh record highs Wednesday. The Euro stock 600 index is up 15% and expectations of additional stimulus will have played an important part in these gains. Here in Australia, the RBA Governor's speech at the Annika Foundation lunch Thursday added a bit of weight to our views on monetary policy. Lowe noted the board is prepared to provide additional support by easing monetary policy further and, whether or not further monetary easing is needed, it's reasonable to expect an extended period of low interest rates. This is very much in tune with Westpac's revised call that rates will fall to 0.5% in February of next year, with the possibility that the RBA might consider a package of policies that would enhance the impact of the rate cut. In New Zealand, we now expect the RBNZ to cut rates the week after next and again in November, with risks skewed towards earlier and or more aggressive cuts, and even a possibility the OCR could drop below 1%. Now next week here in Australia, the release of data for Q2 Consumer Price Index will dominate. Westpac is forecasting a 0.5% rise in the June quarter CPI, lifting the annual rate to 1.5% from 1.3% and the trim mean is forecast to rise 0.33% on the quarter or 1.5% on the year. This data will emphasise that core inflation remains well below the bottom of the RBA target band as moderating housing costs hold back modest inflationary pressures elsewhere. We remain of the view that the Australian dollar is well capped by 70 cents and continue forecasting a drop to 68 by year end and 66 by NQ1 next year. Offshore, the Federal Open Market Committee meeting Tuesday and Wednesday will dominate. Markets are more than fully priced for a quarter of a percent rate cut but with lawmakers having forged a debt ceiling deal this week and US-China trade talks set to resume next week in Shanghai, the move will likely be seen as the first of what Westpac is expecting to be two insurance cuts. Given this backdrop, we're forecasting further strength for the US dollar into year-end. Now, Next week also brings US non-farm payrolls on Friday, which will be closely watched after the very solid 224,000 rise in jobs last month. We also have the Bank of Japan meeting Tuesday and the Bank of England meeting on Thursday too. These are all factors we'll talk about in next week's markets update.